Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are doing complementary events. Now to do complementary events, you need to be familiar with exclusive events. You need to be familiar with exhaustive events. If you are not familiar with this, then you need to go over your work. What we have learned already is that exhaustive Exhaustive means that all the elements are used up. Okay, and then exclusive means that there is no overlap. So, for it to be exhaustive, P of A or B must equal to 1. And for it to be exclusive, must equal to 0. How does this affect our complementary? Complementary events means that number 1, they must be exhaustive and number 2, they must be exclusive. So for a complementary event to take place, both these rules must apply. Now, if both these rules apply, look at what happens. If I have P of A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A and B, in this they are saying that P of A and B must equal to 0. Now, if I'm saying that P of A and B must equal to 0 and for exhaustive, I'm saying that P of A or B must equal to 1, which means that I'm saying that this part must equal to 1. So, what we get for complementary is that P of A plus P of B is equal to to 1. This is the formula for complementary events. For an event to be complementary, it needs to have two rules. You need to prove that it's exhaustive and you need to prove that it's exclusive. Remember, to prove that something is exclusive, all we do is prove that P of A and B is equal to 0. To prove that something is exhaustive, all we do is prove that P of A or B is equal to 1. But to prove that it's complementary, instead of saying, A, hey, I'm going to prove both of this, what we do is we basically summarize it in the form of that P of A plus B is equal to 1. Now, this formula becomes very helpful because if two events are complementary, then look at what happens to P of B. P of B is going to equal to 1 minus P of A. And P of B is basically saying P of not A. Because whatever's in B is not in A is equal to 1 of P of A. So complementary rule becomes useful on the not also. So when I tell you something's complementary, calculate the P of not A. Then eventually this rule becomes useful. Okay, now let us go back to the two events where we discussed exhaustive. When we discussed exhaustive, we had two events. We had the one where we had A and B. The two events for A and B, we had A or B is equal to 1. But pay attention to this one. Notice what P of A and B is. When we have event of C and D, notice what P of C and D was. Now from this, we can decide that this event of A and B was number 1, it was exclusive and number 2, it was exhaustive. So, event A and B is complementary. But look at C and D. Number 1, it was inclusive. We had an overlap. Number 2, it was exhaustive. But by being exhaustive, 
does not help us to be complementary because it was inclusive it failed the test so in this case we could say event a and b is complementary but event c and d is not complementary thank you for watching